Over the past couple of years, we've seen a sharp increase in pressure on farmers. This has been particularly the case in Europe, where plans to reduce farming operations by 33% have been looked at in certain countries. Family farms are being left unsupported, and when they struggle, are left with a buyout option from the government. And this is happening in the countries where they don't even have complete food security. Why are governments neglecting farmers? And how can we change this? The Netherlands, Belgium, France, and most recently Ireland have in the last few years all seen major farmer protests. All sparked by the EU's new green agenda. Let's have a look at what the policy changes are and how they're affecting the farming industry. The EU Green Deal. What is it and why the radical changes? The European Commission site states, climate change and environmental degradation are an existential threat to Europe and the world. To overcome these challenges, the European Green Deal will transform the EU into a modern, resource-efficient and competitive economy. With their main goals to ensure no net emissions of greenhouse gases by 2050, economic growth decoupled from resource use. As a stepping stone to this, they propose to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. In addition, the package includes a new soil law, which will help have healthy soils in the EU by 2050. In this article, the EU finds that 60-70% to of soils in the EU are currently unhealthy, and costs associated with soil degradation are estimated to be over 50 billion euros per year. If it's a green deal, why attack the farming industry? Methane is the second biggest contributor to climate change after carbon dioxide, and according to some research, livestock are responsible for up to 14.5% of the emission. This led policymakers to find a solution to cutting down on emissions, reduce the numbers. In basic terms, governments around Europe want to cut down on numbers, cut down on livestock numbers, and that should equal less emissions. But they're forgetting one vital thing. They still need to produce, so it's likely they'll just import the meat from outside of their territory pushing the problem out of their line of sight and letting other countries deal with it. All of this instead of looking at better, more efficient ways to produce in the agricultural sector. The Netherlands 2021 The Netherlands became the second largest exporter of agricultural goods in 2021, boasting an impressive industry. However, in late 2022, Dutch ministers stated, We have to develop a new agricultural system, one that our nature can carry one in which we sustain a good quality of our water and in which the agricultural sector contributes to our climate goals. This led to a number of planned policy introductions, including one to buy out 2,000 to 3,000 peak emitters. According to the minister, this would be the most generous arrangement, and a more generous arrangement will not follow after this one for farmers. Now, obviously, this was more of an ultimatum than a working relationship. You can't change the farming industry overnight. It takes time, and the farmers are willing to adapt to new situations. But that isn't possible when one party, aka the government, does not want to work with them. The Dutch government gave an estimate. 11,200 farms will have to close, and another 17,600 farmers will have to significantly reduce their livestock numbers. Seems very obvious how supportive their current government is providing a most generous arrangement. However, that wasn't the end of it, and the protests following this spike support for the Boa Burger Buaging, or the Farmer Citizen Movement, which leapt into second place nationally among the parties. This is an encouraging sign, but for how long this support for farmers will last, no one knows. Caroline van der Plas, current party leader of the Farmer Citizen Movement, stated, if we downsize farming here in the Netherlands, it'll just move to other countries that are less sustainable than we are. Every cow we lose here will be replaced by two or three somewhere else in the world. So if we need to reduce carbon dioxide, nitrogen, ammonia, let farmers here come up with innovations to make production cleaner. A common practice for governments these days. Shift the problem from your country to somewhere else. Somewhere where you can't see it and won't notice it. The Netherlands was just one of the countries with policies that would shatter the agricultural industry, and most have a common theme. 
reduce numbers instead of becoming more efficient. In context, the Netherlands wants a reduction of up to 30% of their dairy and beef cattle. Ireland is considering culling 200,000 cattle in the next three years to reach its climate goals and fight global warming. It's just absurd, right? France, which is currently the EU's biggest agricultural power, had the government calling for greater food security after the C-19 pandemic. However, what do they do? Put restrictions on certain agricultural products without viable solutions to the actual problem. It seems inevitable. Governments in dealing with farmers look a bit like this. Number one, demand a reduction or restriction. Number two, provide no solution. And then number three, buy out the farmer and dissolve the operations into larger corporations. This leads to a smaller group controlling the majority of farming operations and gives governments great control, exactly what they're looking for. If everyone contributes to the Green Deal, then what's the problem? Well, at surface level, when you look at it, you might say, but people in all industries are making sacrifices and cutting back. Why are farmers outraged? And this is where it gets juicy. Their proposals see a cut of up to 55% in some countries of farmers. Yes, that means half the farmers will no longer continue their family farms and most likely not be able to carry on in the industry. In comparison, the other industries that produce harmful emissions are given carbon credits to balance this out. And where do you get these carbon credits from? One of the sources is from farms. But not farms that are producing agricultural goods, farms that are preserving lands and forested areas. And this is where it gets even deeper. Corporations that emit harmful gases can buy out farmland and then apply for carbon credits through this ownership. They're then able to balance out their harmful emissions within a completely separate industry, i.e. the agricultural sector. Small farmers can't compete with deep-pocketed investors and the situation is clearly becoming worse. Governments love being able to control a small number with large influence and this is exactly where we're heading. One industry receives little to no support and a 2030 deadline where other industries are receiving billions in support and an extended time frame up to 2050. European agriculture, once the pride and backbone of the continent, is facing a period of unprecedented challenges that threaten its stability and sustainability. Small and medium-sized farms, which have traditionally formed the backbone of European agriculture, are facing economic pressures that make it difficult for them to survive. Global competition, price volatility, and increasing input costs have led to farm consolidation, with larger industrialized farms gaining dominance. This trend not only threatens rural communities, but also results in a loss of traditional farming practices and cultural heritage. Policymakers must prioritize the support and incentivization of small-scale and family farms, ensuring fair prices, access to credit, and targeted rural development programs. The changing consumer preferences and demands also contribute to the challenges faced by European agriculture. Misinformation by media with regards to agriculture lead to public backlash against farmers, something undeserved for people who spend their lives putting food on your table. Consumers are increasingly seeking sustainably produced, organic and locally sourced food, but don't understand the processes behind food production. One of the underlying issues contributing to the destruction of European agriculture is the disconnect between policymakers and farmers' realities. Governments should actively engage with farmers and agricultural organizations, seeking their expertise and feedback when formulating policies that directly impact the sector. This collaborative approach will foster a better understanding of the challenges faced by farmers and enable the development of more effective and pragmatic policies.